It had been an enormously entertaining morning in Rhubarb's garden. The birds had been watching Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess singing and dancing under the old conker tree. Ha ha! Singing comes so naturally to me. Moggy Malone groaned, as do my outbursts of utterance, darling, smiled Poodle Princess. We need a good agent to find us work, slurped Moggy Malone. Oh, how right you are, darling, puffed Poodle Princess. Uh, excuse me, do I hear on the grapevine that you two delightful creatures are in need of the services of a gifted entrepreneurial connoisseur? An agent? Allow me the honour of scribing a suitable agreement between our good souls. Do what? Write a contract? You can't even write your own name! Stupid cat! Get off with you! Get back on your fence! Young ladies, future show business, if you'll allow. I refer to your glittering talents, of course. Finally, Custard carefully placed the tattered communique into an envelope and proceeded to lick its fish glue with relish. Evening, Custard. Enjoying three dinner nibbles? inquired Rhubarb. Nah, I've got to catch the post with me letter. Catch ye ancient old-fashioned post? Nay, surely not, Rhubarb mused. I'll not hear of it. Allow me to introduce you into the modern age, he insisted. <coughs> with my help, you shall instantly deliver your communication. I have everything here. Electric mail, fax machine, satellite equipment, everything that allows me to... to send your letter to anyone, anywhere. Where is your letter? For the fax machine. Uh, but they, uh, they don't, uh, spluttered Custard. And, uh, my letter, uh, well, it's a bit, uh, long... Winded, Rhubarb concluded. Not to worry, Custard, old scribe. Sooner the message is on my machine, the sooner the delivery. Finally exhausted, Custer surrendered his day-long efforts at the written word. Rhubarb peeled open the recently licked envelope and placed the tattered letter into the grumbling fast machine. What's the number? demanded Rhubarb. They, uh, he, they, they, uh, they don't have a, a, a fax. Custard wailed so loudly that the clumsy-looking thingamajig started up on its own and swallowed the note in a single gulp. Oh, he's never done that before said Rhubarb sheepishly, just as Mouse, rodent scholar, scuttled into the shed, took one look at Custer's mangled letter and muttered something about the post. We'll call on my bone phone. I'll read it out to them. Him. Her. Said Rhubarb. No! Said Custard. Aha! So your scribblings are secret. I'll bet they, whoever they are, do have a fax. Well, someone's got a fax, and they know your fax number, Sweet Mouse, as the contraption began to grind out a message. How exciting to be Rhubarb. Who could it be? It's a... Uh, oh, it's junk fax, Sweet Mouse. It's what? Rhubarb asked. A load of rubbish! Junk mail! Ha ha ha! Custard laughed as Mouse read the stumbling message out loud. Uh, win ye an old-fashioned letter writing kit. Ha ha ha! A traditional fountain pen, writing paper, and scented envelopes. Mouse read. <laughs> Smelly envelopes and an old pen. <laughs> Custard was purple. I do not need ye traditional writing kit. I have my electric communication centre, Rhubarb barked, just as Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone turned up. Oh! Trilled Moggy Malone. Could this fax message be from my clever new agent about me new international music deal? Could it be from the Grand Theatre about my new play, darling? Spake Poodle Princess with plenty of feeling. Will somebody turn that off? Rhubarb glared at Mouse as the stream of paper continued to growl its way out of the fax machine and flood the garden. I think I'll just uh, deliver this personally. Too late for a post, said Custard quietly, as he picked up his shredded letter and followed the others. Agent. <laughs> That's what this writing is all about. 
Mr. Paquette. Never known to work, ever. Theatrical and musical agent, suddenly. Ha! Huh. I suppose all that drivel what you wrote is a contract. What? Oh, yes. Tomcat, Custard's friend. Yes, hello, said Rudolph. What can I do for you? <laughs> uh huh. You'd like a message delivered to Custard? Yes. Custard is best agent in world. <laughs> Okie dokie, Custard Tom, said Rhubarb. Leave it to me, he grinned. A message for Custard. A is for agent, B is for buffoon, C is for Custard, Rhubarb muttered to himself as he stirred the gooey letters around a large pot of cold alphabet soup. Then he made his call. Oh, Custard! Yeah? Message from Tom Cat. Ha! Ah, send it over! Ha! <laughs> Custard sniggered. A pleasure, echoed Rhubarb. You have mail! Gah, it's hot, said Rookie. In Rhubarb's garden, Poodle Princess and Mobile Malone trudged back and forth with their heavy watering cans, while Rhubarb and Custard sat under the shade of the old conquer tree, trying to think. As for the poor old lawn, there was absolutely nothing that anyone could do. Fancy a game of cricket? mused Rhubarb. Nah, no lawn, sighed Custard, as a bee droned laboriously past. You shouldn't be carrying all that water, you know. It's far too heavy, said Rhubarb. Yeah, Custard added. And you promised to dream up a watering system. Pipe dream, more like it, puffed Moggy. Pipes, spouted Rhubarb, and stood up in a good idea sort of way. Pipes, we'll have underground pipes, he babbled. We'll water the garden with pipes. The flowers will grow and we can play cricket on the lawn, he gushed. The custard had nodded off and Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone had gone up to the house for a cup of tea. After all, watering is a very thirsty business. With that, Rhubarb picked up his bone phone. Mouse, that you? Half an hour later, Mouse, rodent scholar, turned up and Rhubarb explained his new idea, an automatic watering system for the garden. Well, you are... Brilliant, said Mouse. I know, said Rhubarb, and explained how the water would rain down all over the garden automatically. Oh, a pity to have to dig up what's left of the lawn to bury the pipes, squeaked the mouse dryly, and Rhubarb explained that Mole, Master Tunneler, would be the hero in this brilliant underworld plan. Oh, absolute genius, said Mouse, as Rhubarb called Mole on his bone phone. As Rhubarb and Mouse pored over the plans for the automatic watering system, Mole drilled and tunnelled through the night and under the garden. When morning arrived, the new day began with Mole pickaxing his way up through the shed floor. Right, that's it, all done. You just have to turn her on and the garden will soon be a blooming flower show. Oh, thank you, Mole, said Rhubarb. Keeping the new watering system secret, Rhubarb watched Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone start trudging their heavy watering cans while Custard sank into his favourite chair in the shade of the old conquer tree. Whew! It's going to be another hot one, Rhubarb's stage whispered, while Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone ignored him and continued tending their wilting blooms. Yeah, really hot today, sighed Custard. Too hot for watering, gasped Rhubarb. <laughs> OK, said Moggy Malone. The game's up. I've invented a watering system and you are it. It will be a pleasure, said Rhubarb, and explained how Mouse, Mole and himself had perfected the new automatic watering system. I don't believe you, said Moggy. Neither do I, darling, said Poodle Princess and Rhubarb invited them both to relax, enjoy a cool drink, and to watch Mouse turn on the new, fully automatic watering system. Well, in that case, all right then, said Maggie Malone. We'll see, darling, 
added Poodle Princess, and they sat down and eyed the cool drinks. Mouse made a big thing about how easy watering the garden can be, then turned the on wheel with great ceremony. Nothing. Not a drop of water to be seen. Well, thanks for the cool drinks, I'm sure. Come on, Princess. Obviously, this isn't going to work, so we'll try our idea, said Moggy Malone, and Poodle Princess nodded dramatically. And as Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess went to leave, a rumbling and grumbling sound rumbled and grumbled until even the old conquer tree stood shaking in its roots. But your tummy rumbling, Custard? Bob inquired. Don't think so, said Custard, just as a gigantic water spout burst from the bowels of the earth and lifted him and his chair high above the old conquer tree, and the garden began to fill with brown, muddy water. Ooh, what a fantastic surge of aquatic power, said Mouse, almost overflowing with excitement, as Mole arrived covered in mud. We can't turn it off. Safety tab is stuck. Said. Custard carried on wailing from the top of the water spout. Tap it with this hammer, said Rhubarb in an engineering kind of way, and Moe dived back into the mud and tapped the tap. It worked. The water kept stopped and Custard was dumped in the mud with a mighty spurt. Ow! It worked, said Rhubarb, feeling very pleased with himself, just as a stab of lightning flashed across the sky and big blobs of rain began to fall all over the garden. Oh, oh, squeaked Mouse. What's this? It's our watering idea, our rain dance, said Moggy Malone, and as she began to sing dreadfully, Poodle Princess began her weird dance and the heavens opened. Uh, crickets are wash out then, said Moe. Yes, Mo, I, I think we're all in for a spell of real rain, said Rhubarb. A moggy monsoon and puddle princess kind of rain, he jested. And it came down in buckets. Rhubarb was in a high old mood as he pinned a map of all the stars in the galaxy to his wall, then launched himself off his chair to ring Mouse, rodent scholar, on his bone phone. Ah, oh, there you are, Mouse, said Rhubarb in a high cosmic kind of way. If you're not doing anything, I wonder if you could give the old mouse wheel the runaround and get the computer going. I was hoping to develop a couple of telephone communication concepts, he rambled. After calling Mouse, Rhubarb wandered down to the shed carrying a telescope, a fat book about rocket building, and a large roll of silver baking foil. Why is Rhubarb carrying a telescope, a book about rocket building, and a large roll of silver baking foil, boyo? asked Mo. The dog is crackers, said Custard. By the time Mouse arrived in the garden, quite a few of the birds had gathered in the old conquer tree and were causing an awful din over Rhubarb's baking foil, telescope and book. And if Mouse was in the garden, something was up. He's up to something, said Mole. Got to be, said Mrs. Hedgehog. I mean, a rocket building book, a roll of silver baking foil and a telescope. I ask you, she nodded with a wink and opened a can of worms and offered one to Mole. At the shed, the door opened and Rhubarb made an announcement. <coughs> there will be a telephone communication satellite rocket launching on the lawn at four o'clock, he bellowed. And Mole and Mrs. Hedgehog stared in amazement. Uncanny, said Mrs. Hedgehog. A telephone satellite, muttered Mole. A what? Custard wailed. A telephone communication satellite will be launched at four. Rhubarb repeated in a slow, recorded message kind of way. So we can communicate on the telephone, he added, slower than ever. But I only live next door, said Custard. Ah, oh, yes, said Mouse, but Catsat would be a bonus. Catsat? What on earth is that? Custard whined. A cat sat, Mouse began, and before he could launch into a sprawling explanation, Rhubarb stepped in. Cat sat, simple, he explained. All you need to know is that cat sat is the very latest in telephone communication technique. Oh, lovely. Telephonic communication, warbled Moggy Malone, 
while Poodle Princess simply oozed technique as they made their grand theatrical entrance. And on that cue, Rhubarb said it was time to get back to their launch plans. Ah, oh, lunch, lunch, lovely lunch, sang Moggy. Launch, he said launch. They're launching a rocket, see, said Mo. Well, we'll have a launch lunch, darling, giggled Poodle Princess, to get things off the ground, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> and everyone laughed and so sad. <laughs> What a great idea! A launch lunch! Custard cackled as he helped himself to a large slice of the feast. Then mm -hmm. suddenly realized how quiet it had gone. Computer design, you say? <laughs> Don't say a word. The countdown has begun, whispered Rupert. And when he'd finished counting backwards, Mouse jumped off the chair and onto the launch plank. Nothing happened. Mouse, I don't think you're heavy enough, said Rhubarb in a rocket scientist kind of way. And after being bribed with two large mm -hmm. chocolate-coated eels, Custard clambered up onto the chair, took a deep breath and jumped onto the plank. As he left, the cat sat on top, took off with a bang and clattered through the grasses of the old conker tree, disappearing somewhere between the plank and the Milky Way. Was that it? Custard asked. Yes, for now, said Rhubarb and reminded Custard that he just helped to launch CatSat, one of the most sophisticated telephone communication satellites ever to be shot into the space. So, stand by your phone, he nodded. As the night went on, Rhubarb and Mouse, Roman scholar, took turns trying to activate the newly launched CatSat. Nothing. Eventually, Rhubarb fell asleep, and finally, Mouse dozed off too. At the first peak of daylight, the bone phone rang and Rhubarb made a dive for it. It was Custard. Rhubarb here? Yes, Custard, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? He chattered excitedly. Mouse, get a bearing quick. Where is Catsat? asked Rhubarb. On the mat, replied Custard. On the mat? Rhubarb puzzled. Mouse had no idea what it meant. Please repeat your message, said Rhubarb slowly, and the answer was as clear as if it were from next door. The cat sat is on the mat, said Custard, and <laughs> broke into fits of uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> as Rhubarb and Mouse looked out into the garden, Custard waved the rocket and the cat sat satellite. Now land it right here, right on my welcome mat. Hence, the cat sat is on the mat, <laughs> tittered Custard. <laughs> hey, diddle, diddle. That'll be the cow what jumped over the moon, he went on. Or perhaps it's a phone call from outer space, teased Moggy. <laughs> no, it's the library, said Rhubarb. They want their rocket book back. Best take off with it then, darling said Poodle Princess, as Rhubarb and the book set off for the library, where, no doubt, he would experience an alien reception. Whiz! The home of ABCs, 1s, 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find kids' TV. Or I can press this microphone. Whiz! That's how easy it is. <laughs>